so we had, I want to sort of t connect these up in a way. So we have spirit, soul, and body. So we had the body, we've just said, was physical. I'll call this one life, using English rather than some other. And uh, I'll call it astral. You could also call it soul. No, I'll call it sentient body, is it? Because that connects with the senses. You can use different names for these things sentient body and particularly that refer points to the fact that animals compared with plants they have senses so ears eyes nose all those sort of things because our consciousness is inward we have to have something that connects with the outward and gives brings some sensations to this inner part the plants don't need it they're sort of out there but we have this consciousness inward, and so things affect, affect are these organs that are made incredibly sensitively in one way or another, sensitive to sound or sensitive to light, and those then give us impressions inside. Um, so through our senses we can perceive the world around us. We get what are called percepts. And so in the in our soul, which is where we experience everything, there's a part of the soul down here, I'll use the same word, sentient soul. So that's sentient body. And as it were, all these things that come through our physical organism are transformed in here. I say that all the nerve endings that give little separate signals, here this is turned into a picture, a picture we can experience. Even though our eyes are made full of lots of little nerves, we don't see the world a lot of dots. We integrate it into a picture. We integrate the picture with the sound we're hearing. And the smells and the taste is all integrated into one big experience. That's the activity of the sentient soul. Then we had another one, the consciousness soul. That integrates, I mean, sorry, this one brings concepts, which is a kind of spiritual thing behind everything. You can see there's a kind of purpose, order, concept, and we're able, through our consciousness soul, to find the percept. Sorry, from the concept to go with the percept. So we're here, looking at this glass, all different things I could see about it. In my thinking, I can bring concepts that help me identify it. And as I go through life, these concepts grow and build and through experience. And so this brings the concepts in here, these two come together into what we can call the comprehension or the understanding part. Comprehension. So, and to say that this is more connected with thinking, this with feeling, and feeling for the truth, and here is more to do with willing. In the sense that when you want to see something with your will, you have to look. It's not a matter of just saying here, everything will just pour in. All sorts of things go there, but to see something, you have to put your energy into seeing it, to look. So the difference between, you say, seeing and looking 
between hearing and listening, you, know, you can see that one of these sort of say, you put yourself, extend yourself through your listening into, into your environment. I don't know how you'd work the words with smelling, smelling and sniffing. <laughs> That's not quite um, tasting. I don't know how you'd say it with tasting. It's one is sort of it just comes to you and the other one you have to go, um, you have to sort of really make an effort. And it's like this thing of real time of course, conclusions. When you become conscious of your perceptions, he called this conclusion. That's the end of the process. Not that these things just drift on by, but you take hold of them with consciousness is something he calls concluding. Both smelling and tasting involve your hands. Sorry? Both, both smelling and tasting involve your hands and bring them. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's an well. element of consciousness. Yeah. It, yeah. But anyway, that's the main thing, that things can happen around you, drift around you, and you'll be unconscious of it. But it's putting your consciousness to it. That's an important element of the process. And then we talked of here, spirit self, life spirit, and spirit human now these are and there's different ways you can look at them I'm just giving you my picture and I gave this caveat you don't have to believe what I'm saying I'm trying to make a picture <coughs> it's what I have got together it may be wrong but you can listen to it and think yeah maybe I can work with that or I think he's got it wrong so spirit self I always think of the spirit as that part that gives you purpose and direction in life. You know, that gets you up in the morning rather than just saying, I'm very happy lying here, I don't see why I should get up, I enjoy lying in bed and, you know, and somebody brings me breakfast and some blah, 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 whatever that might, you know, that uh, where's the drive that gets you up and into the day? Gets you turn up in school and stand in front of 30 children. You know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, so, this is sort of do with uh, spirit, with drive and purpose. And here is, here is um, experience of the present. This is the drive into the future. And here the body is a summary of everything that has evolved in from the past. Your body has gone through your life process from your moment of conception till here. It's a summary of all that has happened, and that in itself is a summary of the evolution of the whole of humanity as well. You have the, some benefit of that. And so it is a picture of the past. It's, um, so you have this body as a summary of the past. This soul is your present. You're busy experiencing what in the moment of now and future is a picture where are we going? What am I doing? My drive and purpose. And so in this part, you can say that part is your personal ones, your personal goals and drives, and it's also a personal, or everything, the personal aspects of the spirit, which are also your concepts or spiritual ideas uh, there, which may not be the universal thing, but they're your version of it. Life spirit is something um, in the spirit is not just yourself, but a life, I like to put it, say, with those with whom you live, which can be a family, a group like this, a school, a country, or a town, or, a, you know, wherever you find there's some sort of social gathering, some social interaction right up to being a country where it's the language, you know, that a, a country shares a language. With English, of course, it goes through many countries, but often there are countries where they're identified by, they have a language and it's rather unique in the world. It's, it's, um, it's a, a, where we share, we live and share that thing, because the language is quite important in that, um, yeah, that is sort of is how we communicate. It's actually, again, this part of the, sort of the interaction 
you know, its language has to have all this thing of going back and forth. It's how we connect with one another, or it's the major one of how we connect with one another. And then spirit human is the picture, the highest one, is where we connect with the whole of humanity, everyone living on the planet. What is hum where is humanity going? And big questions. Why on earth is humanity on this planet Earth now? I mean, where's it going? What's it doing? Who set it up? What's the purpose of it all? These are the big questions connect with the whole of humanity, not just your personal little things about your day-to-day -day business and have you got enough money to pay for the meal tonight, all that kind of thing, which is personal here. Are we going to leave a planet we can live on for our next generation? You know, sort of whatever, bigger, bigger questions. So that's the ninefold thing. And then you find in some places, Rudolf Stein speaks of seven. And then you look at this again, you say, ah, this ego you keep talking about is not there. But the ego working in the present works through, this is its instrument, you might say, is particularly the soul. And so if you read a book like Theosophy, at the beginning he gives these wonderful pictures. It's really worth reading that first chapter just to get these wonderful pictures for these. And, and he says, what he says that out of this ninefold, in a sense you can join these two together into one and these two together because they sort of connect. And so he would say the human being consists of, in the seven, spirit human, life spirit. He puts these together under spirit self. And down here, he puts physical, body, I'll put life body, though often it's etheric, life body, and then sort of combining these two, and then in the middle part, that's where he puts ego. So you find that sort of the nine comes down to seven, and it sort of shifts a bit, because it puts ego in here, you might say the one that's left is the comprehension part. Comprehension. Sorry, that should be big S. So, so this is the ego that works through these things. And Pati says, is the ego, it develops these lower levels into higher levels. And then he also then looks and says that these, if you can look, understand the will of human beings, by looking at different levels here. And he talks about the will at the physical body level. He talks about instinct. What do you understand by instinct? What does instinct mean to you? That you just simply kind of know what to do instinctively?